Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. You will accrue information with medical content that cover every age group. I talk about the back pain. What is lower back pain? Lower back pain can result from many different injuries, conditions or diseases, most often an injury to muscles or tendons in the back. How common is lower back pain? The uh, back pain common is age, weight, overall health, occupation and lifestyle, disease, structural problems, mental health. If we, we don't take the, some different tests and MRI, scan tests, electromyography tests and we think that we have a some uh, we have some muscles problem or vertebral problems but it, it, it will be the gastrointestinal problem the result is uh, maybe gastrointestinal problem and there is uh, herniation problems they have uh, some different herniation and bulging disc protrusion extrusion sequestration and uh, their muscles they have a uh, muscles of back or hip and thigh and the muscles superficial dissections deeper dissections and we, we can move with our muscles and the important muscles in the lower back sides there if they have uh, any weakness and it uh, will be have a uh, postural problems forward head and neck and they have a uh, weakness muscles Weak the muscles of back of hip and thigh they have a uh, superficial dissections and deeper dissections we can saw there is a piriformis muscle why i uh, say that just the piriformis muscle because it's important uh, when the piriformis muscle ha have a spasm the compression is uh, sciatic nerve and the sciatic nerve is started the piriformis muscle and it's uh, spread the lower limb and this lower limb is commonly the they have uh, the tibial nerve and peroneal nerve and it's spread with the tibial nerve and in their ankle and they have a video the sciatic nerve is the longest and largest nerve in the human body running from the lower back through the back of the leg and down to the toes the sciatic nerve starts as a collection of nerve fibers in the lower spine these nerve fibers or roots exit the spinal canal through a number of openings in the bones at each level of the lower spine called foramina these lumbar nerve roots then combine to form one large nerve. The sciatic nerve is about as thick as a man's thumb at its largest point. The sciatic nerve travels through an opening in the pelvis called the greater sciatic foramen and typically runs below the piriformis muscle. This is why piriformis muscle problems or spasm can lead to sciatica symptoms. The sciatic nerve then travels down the back of the upper thigh. Above the back of the knee, the sciatic nerve divides into two nerves the tibial and the common peroneal nerve, both of which serve the lower leg and foot. Certain conditions in the lower back can irritate the sciatic nerve, causing pain to radiate along the nerve. These symptoms are called sciatica, or lumbar radiculopathy. The complex anatomy of the sciatic nerve means that symptoms of sciatica vary depending on where this irritation occurs. It's finished, and we can we have a MRI. There, there's we can saw the cauda echina, and why I saw the cauda echina, and I saw the video for the cauda echina problems, symptoms, syndromes. Cauda equina syndrome occurs when the cauda equina, a bundle of nerve fibers at the bottom of the spinal cord, becomes irritated by pressure or inflammation. The spinal cord runs from the base of the skull to the top of the lumbar spine, where it splits into a bundle of nerve root branches called the cauda equina. 
The individual nerves in this part of the spinal cord exit through small holes in the lumbar spine called foramina and run downward through the sacrum to the legs and feet. The nerve fibers of the cauda equina communicate sensory and motor nerve messages between the central nervous system and the pelvis and lower limbs. They are responsible for control and sensory function of the bowel and bladder, genitals, and saddle area, and the nerves that run down the legs. Any lumbar spine condition that compresses the nerves of the cauda equina can cause cauda equina syndrome. Often, it is a massive disc herniation that causes the syndrome. Other causes include spinal stenosis, inflammation or infection within the spinal canal, tumors, or injury to the spine. The symptoms of cauda equina syndrome will vary depending on which nerves are affected and the degree of nerve compression and subsequent irritation. These symptoms include severe low back pain and neurological problems in the saddle region and lower limbs that may include urinary or bowel incontinence, loss of feeling, motor weakness, or loss of motor function in the legs, such as difficulty walking. Though rare, acute cauda equina syndrome is a serious medical emergency. It usually requires decompression surgery on the spine within 24 hours in order to remove pressure from the nerves. Acute cauda equina syndrome that results in nerve damage is rare. However, if left untreated, cauda equina syndrome can result in paralysis, loss of sensation below the lumbar spine, and permanent loss of bladder and bowel control. Lumbar degenerative disc disease is a condition that sometimes causes low back pain or radiating pain from damaged discs in the spine. A lumbar spinal disc acts as a shock absorber between vertebrae and allows the joints of the spine to move easily. The strong fibrous outer portion of a spinal disc, known as the annulus fibrosus, contains the soft inner core of the disc, the nucleus pulposus. Each person's spinal discs undergo degenerative changes as they age, but not all people will experience symptoms as a result of these changes. Symptoms are most commonly seen in 30 to 50 year olds. Pain from degenerative disc disease is usually tolerable, with flare-ups that last for a few days or more. It is normally felt in the lower back, but it can radiate into the hips and legs. The pain tends to be worse when sitting, as the discs have to bear a heavier load. One way degenerative disc disease causes pain is through inflammation of the nerves. When the outer part of a disc breaks down, the inner portion of the disc can leak out, releasing proteins that irritate surrounding nerves. Another cause of pain is when degenerated discs cannot properly absorb stress, leading to abnormal movement along the vertebral segment. Back muscles may spasm painfully in order to stabilize the spine. In some cases, the disc space may collapse enough to compress a nerve root, leading to leg pain, known as radiculopathy. Low back pain from degenerative disc disease often goes away with time as inflammatory proteins decrease and the disc collapses into a stable position. Treatment. What we use for treatment? We use medication, physiotherapy, traction devices, dry needling, stretching of the back and abdominal muscles. And last one is surgical intervention. But um, I prefer the physiotherapy and rehabilitation. Uh, the physiotherapy, what we use the physiotherapy, ultrasound, tense, hot and cold balance application. And we use the rehabilitation program. This program have in the, the exercises screening methods and it's will it uh, helpful for the back pain. Thank you for watching. If you want to see exercise and tests, don't forget to subscribe, turn on the bell notification.